Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about warnings in Python, uh, which are typically used to communicate to a programmer that something is either deprecated or not quite correct, uh, but do it in a way that's non-fatal, isn't, isn't going to cause a full crash of the program. Um, so I want to show you how you can use the warnings module and also how you can be a consumer of warnings. Uh, so let's jump into that. Okay, so to get started, we're going to be working with the warnings module. So if you do pydoc warnings or you uh, open up the documentation for warnings, Python 3 warnings, uh, there's a few functions in here that are useful. We're mostly going to be working with the warnings.warn function. Oh, forgot to mute Discord. My bad. Um, and there's a few other things with like filtering warnings, but for the most part, we're going to be working with warnings.warn. This is how you create a warning in code. Uh, so let's make a I don't know, some module that we're working on. So let's say we have some foo function, and maybe foo is, I don't know, deprecated. Um, so we might import warnings and do warnings.warn foo is deprecated. And this will create a warning. And if we call this, Let's say our application was, I don't know, from mod import foo, and then in the main function, it ran foo. Oops, system exit main. Oh man, my capitalization's all over the place today. I'll make it properly typed at least. Uh, so what warnings.warn does is it allows you to emit a warning if uh, you know if if you want to communicate to a programmer that it's you know problematic but not um, not necessarily going to be a, a huge deal. And by default, they're going to be showing for the default warning code. Uh, there are a bunch of warning types. Uh, let's see, warning dot subclasses. Is that what it is? Classes, I can spell. Um, yeah, so you can see there are a whole bunch of built-in warnings. There's user warning, which is what the default is for warning.warn. Uh, there's deprecation warning and pending deprecation warning for when you want to communicate that a warning will cause something to go away in the future. And in order to set the category of warning, that's the second argument to warnings.warn. So if we change this to deprecation, well, let's do pending deprecation warning which usually you want to do first, then you want to change it to deprecation warning, then you either change it to an error or remove it. Um, yeah, and you can see with pending deprecation warning, it is not displayed by default. So there are, there are some warning types that are not displayed by default. Pending deprecation warning is one of them. Uh, I think deprecation warning is also hidden. Yeah, so user warning is shown, but the other ones are not. Uh, syntax warning also, I forget when, that one shows up if you have things that are going to be removed in future versions. So for instance, this will at some point become a syntax error. Um, but you can see, uh, well, we'll talk about con we'll talk about configuring warnings later because you, you can make these appear uh, even when they're you know, not, not shown by default. And why not? We'll talk about that now. So <laughs> actually, before we, before we go on to that, you'll notice that when I had this warning here, let's put it back to being user warning again. You notice that when I had this warning here, it wasn't particularly helpful in me figuring out where the warning came from. So you'll see that it, it pointed at mod.py, which is where the warning is actually coming from, but it's not the color of the warning. And I think this is, you know, <laughs> I think this is a bug in Python. In fact, um, I have recently complained about this on Twitter. Um, the default for Python for warnings.warn is to point at the code where the warnings call is, and this is almost never useful. Uh, I, I can't think of a time where you would ever want this to be the behavior. You always want the calling code to be the one where it will point at the source here. So you can see here the source is directly warnings.warn. And you can configure that by setting stack level. And my advice is to always set stack level to at least two. 99% of the time you're gonna set it to two, Sometimes you might be in a helper function, so you might set it to slightly more than two, but almost always you're gonna be setting stack level to two. And you'll see now, um, now the warnings code is going to point at my code that's calling this deprecated library code. So you can see 
you know, now we know it's at app.py at line five. And in fact, if we open app.py and go to line five, you'll see we have that exact line. So always use stack level if you're using warnings.warn. I have yet to find a place where you don't want this. So you definitely, you definitely want this. Uh, next, let's talk about how to configure whether warnings are shown up. And for that, we're going to use a warnings filter. And the docs go over warnings filters a little bit, um, well, a lot, but we're gonna, we're gonna mostly <laughs> skim over them. Uh, there are a bunch of different categories. Are they listed in here? Should be uh, once. Here we go. These are the different actions that you can take in response to a warning. Um, by default, there's default, which is print the location for the first time and module and line number. There's error, which means you can you can turn warnings into exceptions. I find this to be very useful when you're trying to you know, run your test suite and make sure that you don't have any warnings. Uh, so what you can do is you can set the warnings argument. That's either by setting dash capital W. Uh, so let's just set it to error in this case. And you'll see that we now get an exception. We got a stack trace here where this warnings.warn call came uh, came from. So you can trace exactly in your code where this where this problem comes from. Uh, you can also set this as an environment variable, Python warnings equals error. And that will also give you the same behavior. So Python will take this environment variable and treat that as the warning filter. Now there are a couple other ones here. I often find that once is useful if there's like a lot of code that's running and you don't want it to you know, spew to the output so much, but you want to be able to at least track down where the warnings are coming from. Uh, Python warnings equals once can be useful. This means that like, uh, if I were to have a loop here, it's only going to produce the warning for the first time that that loop happens. Um, whereas if you do always instead of once, we'll get it a bunch of times. See, so we get a wording for every single time that this gets called. Um, so I find once is kind of useful there. Uh, if you're working with PyTest, which is a testing framework that I maintain, <laughs> uh, Py PyTest also has a bunch of configuration options for warnings, and you can set uh, kind of a chain of warning filters. You can do that with this as well, but it's a little bit clunky to figure them out. Um, with PyTest, I think the PyTest warning docs are actually better than standard library docs, uh, but it, it goes into detail about how you can filter with regular expressions, each of these different parts, because uh, technically this warning equals always. Um, I can select this to just a very specific warning type message category. So if we wanted always deprecation warnings, um, deprecation warning, I spelled that wrong. Uh, I guess user warning extends from deprecation warning. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> Well, let's uh, change this to uh, syntax warning. I don't know. Not not actually the warning type here. Wait. Do I have this wrong? Message category module line number. Category is a class. What? <laughs> uh, maybe because it's always. Uh, ignore. Syntax warning. There we go. There's an example. So we were able to use the ignore action and we're specifically matching the syntax warning. I could also match the message in here as well. So if I just wanted to ignore, you know, foo, uh, I could do this here. Foo is a regular expression, so you could do, you know, something like this if you really wanted to. Um, uh, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was a regular expression. I guess it is not. <laughs> I think in PyTest it is, but um, anyway. So that's how to display warnings. Uh, the thing about stack level, which is very important, bunch of different warning types, how you might see them, how you might interact with them, and how you can make them show up and eventually fix them. Hopefully this is useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.